As a major company in the tech field and a flagship of the risk-seeking capital, Palantir is now a newly added component of the S&P 500, and it has always been on many people's radar and for the right reasons. It is an interesting, intriguing, and exciting stock to be part of. With its share price now reaching and sustaining above the $40 level, it is quite another significant milestone that has been reached and achieved for a stock that has been trading below $10 a bit more than a year ago. The break-even and the profit first helped turning its fortune around, and then the AI craze led its price to a new phase of massive growth. Palantir is now officially part of the major league, attracting ever more mainstream interest and has entered into the price discovery phase, where the sky isn't the limit. The market wanted a comeback and what we're seeing now is definitely a major triumph. With the financial landscape moving thick and fast, for the better and worse, I wouldn't be surprised if they make new highs in the month to come. Volatility can be a sharp double-edged sword, and it definitely sometimes works in our favor as well. As one of the most symbolic companies in the brave new world, Plenty has been keeping the market's hope up to offer a safe haven for anyone looking to commit their assets in equities. AI isn't the mankind's salvation from itself just yet, but plenty of shareholders hope that their wallets may be blessed by its hype, and I believe that they're right, at least in the foreseeable future. Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well and many profitable trades to come. In this video, we're going to talk about Palantir and see if it can make you a lot of money. Over the past few years, it has become much more than yet another tech stock begging for our money in exchange of empty promises. It is now a major player in the sector that may tell us a lot about how the market appetite for risk exposure may look like and if the tidal wave is ready to raise all ships. The company has enough reputation and prestige to arouse the market's curiosity as well as people's demand and tendency to follow trends. It is a company that people would often view as the barometer of the risk appetite alongside others. Palantir's reactivity to the macroeconomic tidal waves makes it a very interesting company to analyze and to invest in. So in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Palantir and to see whether it deserves to have a place in your portfolio. Before the video begins, I want to take a moment to thank each one of you for coming to my channel and hope that you're going to enjoy your stay and to come back for more content. If you like what you see, please consider to like, subscribe, and to check out my channel for more content about Palantir and other companies. With that being said, I hope that you're going to like today's video and let's continue. So let's start with the short-term price action. Plantier has been having a great time recently, going beyond its 2021 peak of $35.21. This move is very significant because it removes a major psychological hurdle for anyone who wants to buy in Plantier in the current price action, given that they may fear that the resistance will never be reached or surpassed because a lot of people will sell before it reaches that level, assuming that everyone will just take profits. Fortunately, this fear didn't become the reality, and the share price went above the $35, then managed to remain there. For a few days, the short-term volatility decreased significantly, probably to mark a pause and to take a breath, reassemble the bowls to keep discovering where the price is going to land next, depending on the market volatility, its own fundamentals, and the movement of capital around the world for both profit or capital preservation. On Wednesday, Palantir share prices closed at around $42.59, with both the daily high at $43.68 and the low at $42.06, both of which are fairly close to the medium price. Its five-day price action shows a slight increase of 1%, showing that the share price is still waiting for the next catalyst for the most part and doesn't want to go down yet. The momentum th that saw Palantir taking off from $36 to $42 has now been completely used. 
and we may need additional catalysts in order to sustain this bullish trend. The market consensus currently favors towards the buy, and the moving average is a strong buy. As the current price action glides above all simple and exponential moving averages, this is why I believe that the bullish trend is here to stay and will be able to attract more buyers in time. From a media perspective, news articles around Palantir remain positive, many of which suggesting that Palantir may be on the verge of massive growth between the ongoing elections, mounting pressure from Wall Street to push the interest rates down and the equity prices back up, and a possible stars alignment for tech and crypto. At the same time, because the price action has a sharp rise recently, there are also many doubts over what's going to happen in the short run because of the potentially overbought price action. The current news cycle may not have the required steam to push Palantir to new highs, but it's capable of edging the stock to higher levels and to maintain the narrative and to keep the baseline at a relatively high level. The stock's price action has been able to hold itself above the $40 so far while looking for new horizon. Many people find that the last decent entry point has been the massive like liquidation by the, mar the Japanese market. And that to date was the last opportunity to buy Palantir below 30 bucks. Because the composition of its shareholders tends to be a lot more retail than institutional compared to many other major companies, Palantir has always been a like its price has always relied heavily on anticipation, volatility, and self fulfilling prophecy instead of analysis on actual numbers because we're not really trading on the rational side of things. The analysis of the financial results are important, but are not enough to boost its current valuation. We're basically here to trade its future, or to bet on its future, and not really to understand how much it's worth now. The region with a lot of support levels has been identified at around $35, above which we have entered into the price discovery phase, providing a large amount of stability and resilience to its price movement. Now, in terms of volume, the current volume would sit around 80 million shares a day, and this is a very healthy baseline for a stock that we're now seeing towards the tail end of the 2024 altogether, as we will soon enter into a new phase of trading. The current consensus surrounding Palantir is that the market wants to keep it going, but they're looking for more clarity from the rest of the potential shareholders before making the move, since a lot of people also believe that the world economy is in a very fragile position after years of shutdowns and that a massive correction is way overdue. We've been having inflation for years without additional liquidity injections by the central banks, but things may start to change after the elections and we should definitely get ready for both sides of the volatility. From a longer term perspective, I would say that Palantir has a pretty interesting price action pattern compared to the all-time highs a few years ago because it has already gone beyond the previous resistance, which may bring the stock into a new phase of massive growth. Palantir is a tech company created back in 2003 and went public in late 2020 at the peak of the last market boom. It operates in the data analytics subsector of the tech space and has been one of the leading companies in that area. It is known for its position taking, the relationships with public sector actors, and its engagement of key members such as Peter Thiel and Alex Karp. Another aspect that sets itself apart from many of its rivals is its proximity with the intelligence community as the company relied on seed funding from the agencies back in the earlier days. No one ever shouts from the rooftop that they want to do evil, but Palantir certainly doesn't shy away from more delicate situations by working with public sector agencies in legal, healthcare, border control, defense, and law enforcement. Simply put, it is a company that doesn't mind being portrayed as evil and almost wears it as a medal of honor. In fact, shortly after it went public, Palantir decided 
to move its headquarters from the Silicon Valley to Denver, Colorado. This move was more than a pursuit of lower overhead or a change of scenery, but a statement about the public image it wants to portray. The market has always shown a lot of interest in how the company and the stock are doing. The fact that it went public when the bullish sentiment was sky high in the tech sector could have been a contributing factor, as the world was preparing for a fundamental change about how societies would function in a place where more interconnectivity happens while remaining remote from anybody in the physical world. A technological and societal utopia that was deeply flawed and never truly came to be. Palantir shares attracted the market's attention mostly because its narrative was the right fit in the right time as the tail end of the quantitative easing era mentality combined with the pandemic era dream of interconnectivity and never-ending financial boom, while capital was looking for a safe haven from the uncertainty and the collapse of the real-world economy outside of our screens. In a way, Palantir symbolized the answer we wanted to slap on all our problems, and for some time it was made true by the supply and demand of modern finance. We are interested in Palantir's promise of reaching ever higher price levels, a promise that seemed set in stone when large quantities of money were pouring in a company with deep pockets backing it up, as the world was preparing to enter in a new era of endless growth and prosperity. This bullish and very optimistic narrative about Palantir has been backed up by the numbers. Financial information has been known to move the market as stakeholders want to have their assumptions validated by something concrete. Gross margins, cash flows, and revenue growth are some of the most sought-after data points that people want to know about Palantir when they do their analysis. The growth margin measures how profitable Palantir truly is at the core. Beyond the quality of its marketing campaigns, the hype around its projects, or its brand power, gross margin tells us whether there is enough demand for what the company is selling, and if each additional dollar covers the additional expense that the same dollar generates alongside. To that end, Palantir is a very successful company with a decent profit margin, even when the shares were trading below $10 during the last sell-off period. This was the first sign that Palantir is more than just an empty promise begging for your money. The business model is something that can be scaled up and marked up because it has true fundamental value and it is validated by the market and its clients. Once the core business model has been validated, cash flows tell us whether Palantir will need to go through cash injections to keep its operations going. And very often, a tech startup may ask shareholders to pitch in even after they bought the shares, because the funds collected from equity sale is not enough to cover the operating expenses. If that were the case, it would be a sign of weakness from the company, because it would mean that the company's own operations are not profitable enough to stand on its own two feet. For Palantir, that problem is also non-existent because its cash flows have been positive for quite some month, mostly because its operations are profitable and it doesn't need to dilute its shareholders to keep the lights on. However, these numbers are not enough to push Palantir higher. The most important factor is the growth rate of revenue, especially from public sector. Like many other tech companies listed on a NASDAQ, people buying Palantir want to buy the powerhouse to become not the decently profitable company that is. This would also explain the high multiplier that Palantir is currently enjoying compared to many of the blue chips companies in more mature sectors. This is a double-edged sword for those who want to dabble in the tech field in general, but for Palantir, the public sector aspect is an additional side to watch for. Since most of its growth does come from the public, Any additional partnership with healthcare, defense, or law enforcement departments may trigger massive upsides for its shares. On the flip side of the coin, every time an existing partnership ends, 
or a scandal makes it to the headlines, plenty of shares may see a dip that could take a few days to come back from. These three measures are what define plenty and may explain its dynamics in the market in general. It is an interesting company that people are putting a lot of hope into because its financial results are good and do suggest that Palantir has the potential that people claim it does. Because Palantir is a highly specialized and unique company that is praised for its technical expertise and noticed for its position taking by its management and shareholders, it's always been the center of a lot of interest, talks and speculations from the market stakeholders as well as the media outlets. Along with Nvidia and Tesla, it's probably one of the most talked about companies in the world, despite the fact that it has a much lower market cap than many other blue chips companies. Hardly any day goes by without an article to be written by major media outlets about how Palantir is doing or where they believe it's going to land. The coverage can be relevant in two ways for our analysis. The articles can give us a feeling or a sense of what is the current market consensus about what happened and the mood that is the most likely to influence what's going to happen next. Their tone is often determined by the price action at that time and plays the role of current trends amplifiers rather than contrarians showcasing potential trend reversals, even if it's not a crystal ball allowing you to see where the price is going to go next. It can always tell you what the current sentiment is, which may allow you to take a hint of what the next move may be. The second level of analysis is more basic, but also more useful. It is not about the content, but the quantity of the coverage. Depending on the number of articles written about Palantir as well as who writes about it, we can have a rough estimate of how popular the company, the narrative, and the sector are in people's minds. Alongside the potential upsides, entire economies may benefit from this as part of trickle-down liquidity from risk-seeking capital. Ultimately, papers want to sell clicks, just like investors want to get alpha. If there are shining bubbles in the market, news outlets are usually very fast to pick them up, validating the overall direction of any subsequent bull runs. The number of articles currently indicates that the market is interested in what happens with Palantir and the anticipation is a further increase in price when the interest rates begin to decrease and fall. We just have to be careful about the limit of analyzing news articles as they tend to describe the direction the wind is currently blowing, but far less effective when it comes to predicting where things are going to go next. Now, obviously, since you're looking up about Palantir, Chances are there are unique aspects piquing your interest. Trading or investing in Palantir does come with its own upsides, including its unique profile, its potential growth rates, and the existing stability. Palantir is a company operating in the data analytics subsector, which is a very promising place, lots of favorable talking points, and potential vectors for future growth going forward. The world is getting more digital and analytical on a daily basis as more and more business decisions will need data-driven information in order to make that call as well as to optimize daily operations and locate the trends of the future. Plantier has been trading for a few years but its existence dates back more than a decade ago and its expertise does bring it head and shoulders above many of its rivals. It has deep relationships with deep-pocketed public sector departments in defense, law enforcement, and healthcare that we talked about, all of which require Palantir's digital solutions for their planning and decision-making. Unlike many of the Silicon Valley unicorns, Palantir also doesn't pretend that it doesn't do any evil or that it lives in a perfect world. The HQ move to Denver, along with the Davo speeches of its CEO Alex Karp, do suggest that Palantir is willing to take on the challenges of the future and that it's not afraid to say so out loud. The relationships established by Alex Karp and Peter Thiel, two of the founding members of Palantir, have opened many doors in both public and private sectors, allowing Palantir to cruise on the trends. Recently, it also announced that it's going to participate in the trending AI field, 
which is one of the main reasons for the stock to go from $15 to $30. In addition to all this, Palantir does have a layer of stability that many of its rivals don't have, and that can be seen in its cash flows. Palantir's cash flows have been in the positive for some time already, which is a rare advantage above many of its competitors because it means that the company can sustain itself in terms of the needs and doesn't have to beg investors for more cash injections in exchange of dilutions. With that being said, investing in Palantir also comes with a few unique downsides due to its company profile and the characters of the sector itself. Being a company that analyzes data for a living, Palantir will be more exposed to potential legal problems compared to other industries. Since the topic of data privacy, ownership, and proper usage have been under heavy scrutiny from the past scandals with social media, how Plenty acquires, processes, and safe keeps those data while serving its clients can be open to legal battles, which may cost the company its image, reputation, its bottom line, as well as future opportunities to get more contracts from government agencies, the same agencies that may require these data that were maybe used under inappropriate circumstances. It's a bit ironic, but that's probably the way it's gonna go. My theory is that since this is a touchy, delicate area of this economy, and no one wants to rock the boat, meaning no one wants to take on the blame if anything bad actually happens, in that case, it's possible that Plenty may take on the loss without having the capacity to shift any of the blame to other stakeholders. Because if they do that, they're going to rat on other people. And maybe they don't have the opportunity or the luxury of doing this. The other thing to consider is the potential decay of the narrative's value. AI and data analytics are very popular topics now. They're trending in the market, that's for sure. But what would happen if they stop being so popular once a newer sector has been created out of thin air or come back from disgrace? If we look at what happened with electric vehicles, we may see a similar drop in interest for data and AI, along with a potential drop in their market cap value for companies like Plenty. So what these additional risk factors mean for anyone really looking into buying Plenty is that it is a blue chip sized tech stock with the volatility or arguably with the volatility of a startup mostly held by retails. Trading comes at a significant potential price volatility cost and investing does require a fairly high tolerance of uncertainty. So right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, 
which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investor's appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrest, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. That being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. Now, having said all this, my recommendation for Palantir overall would be that it's a pretty bullish buy in the long run. And in the short run, I would recommend to trickle in carefully. It's a stock that a lot of people believe has a bright future ahead of itself, but sometimes it can also be overbought. I believe that the market will eventually stabilize at around $40, before making the next push. The stock is still in a, how can I put it, price discovery phase, and still like sky's the limit when it comes to how high it can go before making a real change of, like a, a switch of trend. So I believe that the market now needs just new catalysts to start another phase of exponential growth if the investors look to get back into the game, both as a safe haven for flight capital around the world, but also as a token of optimism and trust to the new hopes of tomorrow. Now, I believe that the share price is a little bit overbought at the moment, so I would definitely buy more on the pullbacks, but start to have like a very little presence or footprint into the stock. Personally, I would recommend to commit between 8% to 10% of your portfolio in Palantir and to gradually purchase it over the next 18 months.